All right, Robert, I, I know what this is. Where's, where's the little uh, hole in the wall that looks like a moon? <laughs> That's a different building. Man, is that like a ramp to get up into it? Uh, no, this is, doesn't even have a door. How the hell do you get in there? Well, on the back. This is our solar dehydrator. Um, All right, that makes more sense. Okay, I'm with you. It took me a minute there. So the okay. I, the idea is that the sun shines on this under this glass. All right. That's black in there. We clean that off so it's more black. Um, and heats that up. Heat rises. So already we're having flow going up this ramp. Okay. Also, the tall chimney is also black. Noted. The sun shines on that. Okay. Heats it up. Also creates a draw. So now we have air going in the bottom and coming out the top. So the one at the top sucks. The one at the top sucks. This one blows. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Load it. You come over here. You open this back door. Oh, man. And in here we have eight trays, three foot by three foot stainless steel screen. So you can load those. It looks mighty new. Have you guys even used this yet? This is a year and a half old. We've dried a whole bunch of stuff in here. We dried beans and flowers and cherries cherries grapes we, we burnt some tomatoes we put tomatoes in it and it was extra hot that day and we came back over here later and they were all black they became pig tomatoes oh pig tomatoes so raisins took a while if the sun if the sun isn't really really direct that was, that was later in the year later the in the year when there's more bigger. clouds and more rain but um a lot of dried kale we made. Mm -hmm. We eat that everywhere. Walnuts. Walnuts, yeah. Apples. Apples. It's uh, called a downdraft solar dehydrator. And what it does is it uses three passive forces. Um, so there's no fans necessary to do the dehydration process. Um, this is the collector on the front. This is a blank. It uh, goes down about six inches. and. I would recommend painting it black. I put black plastic and that's starting to cramp up in there. Um, and so what happens is air enters from below and I obviously got to clean that grass out. Air enters from below and then it, it goes, it heats up as it travels up this channel. So the warm air is entering from the top and um, it, as, um, as the air gathers moisture, it tends to sink. And that's why this, uh, they don't, the downdraft design doesn't have the warm air entering from the bottom because it would be fighting itself as it gathered moisture going through the tray. So it enters from the top and it gathers moisture and sinks. So that's, that's a, the second passive force. And then once it gets to the bottom, um, at the bottom there's a chimney, which is basically, you know, the the width of the um, dryer and a few inches, uh, a few inches deep, and I guess that's a third pass of force. What do you got in there now? Uh, nettles. So here it is, May. Oh, I can see the little. Is that no? So you got uh, prunes. Yeah, these are Italian plums we we dried last fall. They're still in here from last fall. Um, this this. Solar dehydrator turned out to be a real good deal, and the reason we got into the solar dehydrating is uh, I borrowed. I, d I do a lot of fruit tree pruning, and people give me a lot of fruit, and I borrowed about eight electric dryers one day, and I dried a load of fruit, and it cost me when I got the power bill um, enough to where I could have bought a 55-gallon drum of fruit. So I never dry with electricity again. It just cost too much. Uh, a friend of mine built this unit, Lucas McGeever. I don't know where he got the plans, but he's modified it um, since then. He's built a few of these. And this thing works pretty darn well. It's got 10 shelves. Each rack is two by three feet. It can hold a whole lot of fruit. And it works on a very interesting and counter counterintuitive way. Right here is the solar collector. Collects the heat. 
heat comes up, comes in here, and gets pushed down through the column of fruit. And then this back wall here is a chimney slash, it's got a false wall in it, and it's, it's actually a chimney. So the air is getting sucked through here. It's not really the heat that's drying this fruit, it's the air movement, and the air moves pretty darn quick. Of course, the heat doesn't hurt at all, but we've dried things on cold, cloudy days and without, without a whole bunch of heat. It's mostly the air moving through that is the real key. So this, this is just a piece of wood inside this painted black. Yeah, yeah, and, and then plexiglass. The key to this whole unit is it's got to be airtight, and it needs a little maintenance right now if you've got a cockpit when things start warping and such. And because if you want that air to come up here, get drawn down, down and then back up through this false wall, uh, you've got to have it sealed pretty darn tight. It can dry plums in about um, three days, and, and they're the hardest thing to dry. Apples only takes about a day and a half, and then um, you, you can dry other things in here too, meat if you want to. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna test one of your pruny things here. Well, it's just been sitting out there for what, six, seven months? Yeah, just sits there. Yeah. Seven months sitting out there. Seems plenty good to me. Yeah. There's that wall. You can feel the air rushing through. Whoa. Yeah, I can. It's it's pulling air hard. Yeah, even with the door open. So when you shut the door, it really goes. If you like this sort of thing, come on out to the forums at permies.com where we talk about preserving food homesteading, and permaculture all the time. How about dead animals? You put any dead animals in there? I mean, besides cats? <laughs>